We have Rhett Kessler, fund manager at Pangana Capital, where he helps manage around $1.1 billion in assets, and he joins us from Sydney this morning. Good to have you with us, Rhett. A good Monday to you. First off, uh, let me just get your reaction on Macquarie Bank, a downgrading its profit forecast. We're looking at a drop of 25% year on year. What does that say to you? Well, that came out this morning. I haven't had a chance to look at the analysis, but it does seem that there's um, the lack of market activity and lack of volumes, um, decreasing risks uh, within the market volatility is probably affecting that. I must be honest, I haven't had a chance to look at the detail of that, uh -huh. and we'll be looking at it when I get back to the office. But certainly okay. that, that will hurt yeah, the... No um, yeah, but what about the financials as a whole, the sector itself, if we can't talk about Macquarie specifically? Well, I think the four big banks are, have been very, very resilient through this period. The competition has been effectively um, taken out of the market through the financial crisis. These banks are in a very strong position. Um, because of the problems globally and uh, fears about their cost of funding, they've been marked down in terms of their ratings. We think it's um, exceptional value. They're paying fully frank dividend yields of 8 or 9% to investors. Um, cash returns, after-tax cash returns of 10%. Um, and I think the stabilization potentially in the U.S. is very, very possible, uh, positive for our banking sector. Macquarie mm -hmm, Bank mm -hmm. aside, now, which is a totally different business. <laughs> okay, well, Red, let me just talk to you about the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia as well, speaking of banking. Um, you know, we're expecting an interest rate decision later on today, but uh, it seems like the RBA and Glenn Stevens is getting a little gun shot here, holding off rates possibly again for a fourth straight month. How are you reading things right now, Red? Well, I think the Reserve Bank's played it exceptionally well. They cut very sharply last year through the financial crisis, which gave them a lot of ammunition from a high base, um, they cut very sharply down to a low base, then saw that Australia had weathered it remarkably well, financial system stable, corporate profits have held up exceptionally well, unemployment's been very low, um, and then inflationary pressure started to feed in. So he ratcheted up interest rates quite quickly. Now I think he's got some breathing space due to the uncertainties globally. Um, Christmas is coming up, which is a very big period for the retailers. I think he's being prudent in holding off. Um, it's a difficult game though because inflationary pressures are building and I expect if he doesn't mm -hmm. lift them this side of Christmas, it will certainly be in the early part of next year. Okay, so you mentioned retailers there. Right? What are the best buys right now in the Australian market? Well, we've, we've, looking, we've looked at some retailers, but certainly the best buys for us are things like the big four banks, as I mentioned, um, in particular News Corp. A uh, US based company with global media interests. We think it's a fantastic group of franchises that's, that's priced on a very low multiple, and investors are getting the upside of any turnaround in the US economy for free. Um, and some of the bigger retailers are possibly looking like good value. Um, West Farmers and Woolworths have both been a haven for investors in these uncertain times, so we steer away from those. Uh, some of the smaller uh, more discretionary retailers like a David Jones or a Meyer, we think are well placed for a turnaround in consumer sentiment, certainly leading into Christmas and next year. Uh, Rhett, let's talk about the U.S. economy. You mentioned the uh, upbeat optimism, especially after the private jobs numbers that we got on Friday. Do you throw out the double dip scenario right now? Yeah, look, I don't think it's out of the woods by a long way. That's a personal view. I think the structural problems they're facing are quite severe. Um, we prefer to play in the U.S. If, if we do at all in companies that have resilient business models that are economically uh, resilient. So, you know, News Corp's cable business or film studio business, some of the medical devices businesses. Um, we think consumer leveraging there has got a long way to go, and um, and certainly prefer Australia, which is more tapped into the China story, particularly with the exports of iron ore and coal. Okay, Red, nice talking to you this morning. Thank you for your time. Have a good Monday. That's Red Ketzler of Pangana Capital.